stellar characters, timeless storytelling, and a memorable theme song to cap it all off. In the 1980s, this was very much the formula to captivate your attention week in and week out. We're here today to talk about one of the most famous television series of all time. Along with the incredible cast of characters portrayed by some household names in that era, joined by others who would eventually become household names as the years went by. So strap in for this stroll down memory lane, because if you have a problem, if no one else can help, and if you can find them, maybe you can hire the A-Team. Let's begin. The A-Team was watched by countless millions of households worldwide. There was just something magical about seeing these four Vietnam veterans and other associated team members complete a mission time and time again. The depth of the characters made them appealing for viewers who could enjoy their ongoing exploits. The show ran for five seasons consisting of 98 episodes spanning from 1983 through to 1987 and the on-screen chemistry between the cast is something that is hard to replicate, being something magical that helps make the show watchable even several decades later. As for the storyline, the establishment of the A-Team began when they were sent on a mission by their commanding officer near the end of the Vietnam War. Tasked with robbing the Bank of Hanoi, they succeeded in this mission only to find that the colonel who had sent them on this exploit had been killed and the headquarters containing all records had been burned to the ground. This meant that all documentation regarding the team's mission no longer existed, and they soon found themselves arrested as well as imprisoned, but eventually broke out of that maximum security prison to become mercenaries for hire. Perpetually on the run, the team went underground and found themselves on one hired mission after another, often culminating in the gun violence and fight scenes that the series has become famous for. As for the main cast, the primary quartet is led by Lieutenant Colonel John Smith, also known as Hannibal and played by then big name actor George Peppard. An atypical leader with some anti-hero tendencies, he's the oldest member of the group, usually sporting a cigar serving as something of a master of disguise, and often engaging in conversation while utilizing his wise cracking style of humor. He, of course, is known for his catchphrase. You know the one. I love it when a plan comes together. I love it when a plan comes together. Behind the scenes, George Pappard was known for having something of an ego, already being famous for countless roles, including Breakfast at Tiffany's and How the West Was Won. George found himself at odds with other cast members, obviously not wanting anyone to outshine him as the star of the show. However, being outshined by another star of the show was simply inevitable. Fortunately, Papard's ego and behind-the-scenes problems never translated directly to his on-screen character. And as such, we can continue to view the A-Team as a cohesive unit for the purposes of narrative fiction. Sadly, George Pappard would pass away in 1994, long before the modern era of Comic Cons and Fan Expos, where he would have been a welcome guest to meet his endless following of fans. And you know that thing I said about fame just a moment ago? Well, he wasn't the biggest name coming into the series, but he is certainly remembered as the star of the show coming out of it. Fresh off of his Rocky III appearance as Clubber Lang in 1982, where he starred opposite of Sylvester Stallone, Mr. T entered the A-Team series as B.A. Baracus, the team's mechanical genius and strongman, the muscle of the team, or tough guy, so to speak. Depending on where you look, the letters B.A. can either stand for his fictional character's real name, Bosco Albert, or more famously as Bad Attitude. Always in the mood for a fight, B.A. Baracus was frequently the one behind the wheel of the famous A-Team van. Of course, there's a lot to say about Mr. T. He's the first name many think of when the series is mentioned, even if George Papard's Hannibal character is the first name shown in the opening credits. And if it wasn't already obvious from what I was saying before, no, Mr. T and George Papard did not get along one bit on the set of the A-Team behind the scenes, despite their characters meshing very well when the cameras were rolling. Naturally, Mr. T would take on many more roles after this, including stepping into the squared circle in multiple WrestleMania annual events. 
While simultaneously enjoying his A-team success, T would headline the first WrestleMania in a tag match with Hulk Hogan and return for the second WrestleMania in a boxing match with one Rowdy Roddy Piper. Heck, the crossover star power actually went both ways, given that the Hulkster would cross into the world of television by briefly appearing as a guest cast member on the A-Team later on during the series run. Ultimately, Mr. T merchandise was anywhere and everywhere, and his appearances transcended multiple walks of pop culture, be it in live action or even in cartoon form. It's safe to say that his star power eventually exceeded that of George Pappard, which was the obvious source of their ongoing conflict. But hey, when you think about tough guys of this era and all those actors who comprised such a conversation, you'd have to consider Mr. T in that discussion. As for other members, Lieutenant Templeton Peck, or Face as he's more commonly known as, would serve as the team's second in command. Also something of a con artist, charming smooth talker, and ladies man, this slickster is the one who makes the financial arrangements for the team's services. Initially he was played by Tim Dunnigan in the pilot episode, who would go on to play Captain Power later on in his career. Dunnigan was deemed a bit too young looking to be a believable Vietnam veteran, especially one as experienced as Face was supposed to be. Also, Dunnigan was incredibly tall for the role and towered over the other team members. As such, he was replaced early on and on an ongoing basis by Dirk Benedict, who rose to fame as Starbuck in the original Battlestar Galactica series. Of course, Benedict would go on to immortalize the face character for fans of the A-Team franchise. And yes, he looks sleek as ever, cruising around in his Corvette. Finally, we have Howling Mad Murdoch, played by Dwight Schultz. Declared legally insane, Murdoch wasn't actually with the other three members when they were convicted of their initial bank robbery crime, and serves as something of a secret member for the team. He's unique in that he's the team's aviation pilot. Basically, if it has wings, Murdoch will make it fly. Interestingly, he's also the multilingual one of the team, being capable of speaking all sorts of languages, albeit to varying degrees, and even knows how to communicate in Morse code. He certainly adds a lot to the team dynamic, I'd say. Now, as an actor, Dwight Schultz would go on to play multiple on-screen, as well as voice characters in both film as well as on television. While that comprises the core team, it should be noted that during the first season and for part of the second season, the A-Team is joined by news reporter Amy Allen, played by Melinda Kulia. Amy initially met the team after first hearing about them and their reputation, then tracked them down to hire them for a job to find a missing fellow reporter. Being something of a fifth member for the team, she joined them on missions before accepting an overseas job and eventually leaving her A-Team days behind. She'd be replaced for a period of time by another news reporter in Tanya Baker, who was played by Marla Heasley. Though it should be noted, Heasley would also depart the series shortly after, and word on the street is that George Pappard didn't get along with either actress, among others. While the A-Team as a series would remain widely popular for most of its 98 episode run, ratings and popularity would fall dramatically by the fourth season. Shaking things up, the team is finally arrested by the military, drawing an end to their years on the run as a band of mercenaries for hire. The change in direction resulted in the A-Team going on government-sanctioned missions and under the guidance of intelligence operative General Stockwell. The idea was for the team to get their federal pardon eventually and thus shedding their status as wanted men by the US government. The series would culminate with its fifth season that ended in 1987. In any case, the A-Team is known for its fun, episodic missions featuring many chase scenes, gunfights, fistfights, you name it, all in the style of the 1980s television action genre. The Soldiers of Fortune would be made into a series of toys by the company Galoob in 1983, the same year that the television series began. Interestingly, Galoob would produce these figures in two different scales, the larger 6-inch figure scale as well as an O-ring style 3 and 3 quarter inch scale comparable to that of G.I. Joe A Real American Hero, a toy line that debuted a year earlier produced by Hasbro. While the O-ring figures can be found on the shelves of a lot of collectors today, note that the plastic used isn't as hefty as that of G.I. Joe and are definitely a little bit more fragile. As for the 6-inch line, look for the Amy figure if you can find one. She fetches a hefty price on the open market compared to the rest of her team, even if the face sculpt looks 
nothing like Hollywood actress Melinda Kulia. And speaking of G.I. Joe and their enemy Cobra faction, interestingly, the A-Team Galoob line of smaller figures would release generic villain characters by the name of, wait for it, Cobra, Viper, Python, and Rattler, names of which you'd see used for various G.I. Joe figures and even some vehicles. The 6-inch line would make some upscale generic villains as well to go up against our heroes. A handful of vehicles were also produced as part of Galoob's offerings. As such, the 3 and 3 quarter range of vehicles were pretty epic. You've got Face's Corvette, Murdoch's Jet Bomber, Hannibal's Boat, and of course, the iconic, timeless, and amazing A-Team van that was synonymous with B.A. Baracus. B.A. would also be packed in with the armored attack tank. In fact, A-Team merchandise was everywhere, and Galoob even made a 12-inch figure of Mr. T. And I mean literally of Mr. T and not of B.A. Baracus. Of course, over the years, we would see many figures of Mr. T, be it in his modern wrestling figure style or as Clubber Lang in the Rocky movie franchise that I talked about earlier. Interestingly, it's clear that despite the popularity of the television series, the toys didn't translate to as much success as the other toy lines that were running concurrently at that time. Note that you can still find vintage boxed and carded examples even in today's market quite readily. Of course, Galoob wasn't the only brand in the A-Team market as several others such as Ertl and Tyco got in on the A-Team toy merchandising fun as well. Also on the subject of newer figures, the A-Team is obviously a natural choice to continue making toys into the modern era. And several toy companies to date have capitalized on this opportunity, such as Playmobil or Jazzwares, who would make figures based on the 2010 A-Team movie. And while we are talking about the movie, that's right, a good franchise can never stay dormant forever. We'd see the A-Team return in 2010, this time on the big screen. Hannibal would be played by yet another big name senior actor in Liam Neeson. Bradley Cooper was the natural choice to play the character of Face. Charlotte Copley starred as Howling Mad Murdoch and former UFC and Pride champion Quentin Rampage Jackson fits in quite naturally as B.A. Baracus. Other popular actors and actresses would take part in the film and we were luckily treated to a post credit scene where Dwight Schultz and Dirk Benedict would have short cameos, giving us some level of fan service. While the film did receive decent reviews and had what many would call good box office numbers, there just wasn't quite enough revenue generated to greenlight a sequel. Apparently, a box office number of $177 million against a budget of just over $100 million didn't hit the mark that people were hoping for. Having said all that, Seeing the A-Team released and revisited with more modern era of production values was a total treat for long-term fans of the franchise, while also giving an opportunity for new fans to jump on board and witness some of the fun that the four members of this Crack Commando unit had to offer. Regardless of whether you were a fan of the original series, the film, the various lines of toys, or even the comics, the A-Team as an entertainment franchise had a lot to offer. Though it's clear that the legacy of the franchise will always begin with the original series, for which creators and executive producers Frank Lupo and Stephen Cannell managed to catch lightning in a bottle for several years. From watching cars in the original series flipping over time and time again, to seeing bullet holes everywhere as something of an expected part of the show, to Murdoch's ongoing comic relief, to Mr. T's gold chains that made him a unique standout character, there were many things that made these heroes perpetually memorable. It's one of those shows that just brings a smile to your face when you go back and think about it. That said, the characters were more than just rugged tough guys with a knack for violence. In the original series, the team members would often show a softer side, such as the episode where they attended a funeral for a fallen comrade and reminisced about their time served in Vietnam with that fallen friend. Naturally, references to the war would continually play into the show's narrative. Now as a fun part of this video, I would like to ask a trivia question. Did Mr. T ever say the words, I pity the fool, when playing B.A. Baracus on this TV show? But I pity the fool, and I will destroy any man. Let me know your answer in the comments below. I'll mention that I happen to know the answer, but the question is, do you? Anyway, be sure to share your favorite A-Team memories in the comments section below. 
Also, do tell us about who your favorite character is in the franchise. I think you can pretty much guess who my favorite is, but that all has to do with my bias for professional wrestling, of course. Anyway, I look forward to hearing from any and all of you. As evident, and I can't state it enough, the series gave us a lot of fun times over its five season run, and many people will recall this series airing reruns over and over on TV stations well into the 1990s. Regardless, fans of the franchise continue to embrace it to this day, and the A-Team is as immortalized in the history of great television shows as many others in its era, and is always on the discussion of must-watch television series past and present. If you can track the episodes down, I'd highly suggest you do so. And if you enjoyed this video, don't go anywhere just yet. You can watch an altogether different history video by clicking on this link right over here. Or you can have a look at my personal toy collection by clicking on this link right over here. Hopefully you enjoyed how this video came together. Because I sure did. And you know what they say. I love it when a plan comes together. See you next time.